Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today's video is actually part of a video hop for Altenew and we are using the Better Press. So here I just wanted to show you, um, this is legitimately was the first time that I used it. So this is just me unboxing my Better Press from Spellbinders. And in this release, along with a bunch of other really amazing things, Altenew was releasing some press plates as well, which are gorgeous. So you have your like platform and then um, there is a magnetic base as well as a magnetic lid um, that like, and then these three shims. So the shims are made so that you can determine how much pressure that you need. So they go underneath your magnetic plate and then you can put in or pull out as many as you need. I decided this is the um, floral engraving and the dainty uh, floral press plates from Altenew. Both of them are really beautiful. I chose to use the dainty floral and this is legitimately, guys, legitimately the first time that I'm ever using this. Mm -hmm. um, some initial thoughts. Love that there's a grid on it. And as you can see, I'm looking at it as like I would a stamp. That's how I originally put it down. And I was like, no, flip them up. So your designs have to be face up. Um, and then they have an A2 and an A7 size card. So you can see exactly where it's going to go on your card. And I love, love, love that. That matches the same grid marks over here on your clear plate and then they also include in this particular bundle um, their best ever tape so I'm just peeling off um, a couple of pieces and that will go in the corners to hold my paper in place the paper that I'm using is the one that's included in this bundle and it is the um, spellbinders better press cotton card panels in porcelain uh, so it's just white I, for my first time around, you know, because I don't know what I'm doing, um, I decided that I was going to use their black ink. Now, their black ink, they worked with um, Ranger to come up with some inks that were really going to work well. Um, however, they have a lot of colors, which are really beautiful, but you're not married to these. Um, I'm using it because it's the, like I said, it's my first time and I don't want to go messing around with something without trying how it works here. So I have my paper tape in place, I flip it over, and it actually hovers above the design. So when you flip your paper over, it isn't touching, it's hovering on the springs of the magnets on the corners. So you need to run it through your die cutting machine. In this case, it's a Platinum 6 for me, and that applies the pressure necessary to get the impression. The impression is relatively subtle, um, but it's dry almost immediately and it's beautiful. Like the detail on these, look at this flower. I mean, look at all those fine lines. It's just, it's beautiful. Um, even the, like everybody just concentrates on the images, but look at the font on the sentiment. Like those are some really fine lines on there um, and it looks gorgeous. You can actually kind of see the design through the other side. That's what I was showing you there. So once I had my first one knocked out, now, of course, I'm going to go into the experiment <laughs> experiment phase. And I didn't experiment too, too much um, because honestly, I just didn't have time. Holiday week. It is what it is. Um, but so I did want to try some other inks. Now, Altenew just released a bunch of new colored inks, but because this was my first time using it, I really just wanted to kind of stick to the things that I had heard Spellbinders recommend. Um, but I wanted, you guys know that I love alcohol markers and Altenew has beautiful alcohol markers. So I decided I would try it with the Obsidian ink, which is waterproof as well as being able to be used with alcohol markers. Now, this totally worked, but I will say it was a lot messier because it's a pigment ink, which has a foam pad. And so the pad is much squishier. It's not as firm as other ink pads. And so you don't want to like mash your ink pad down onto this. You really want to tap. They re actually recommend that you tap and pivot, which is what I did the first time around with the inking. Um, and for this one, I didn't even do the pivot because I already knew I was putting down so much ink. Um, but I will say that being able to have the option, like for me, for the better press to be worth it, I need to have the option to color it with alcohol markers. And this gives me the option to do one of my favorite techniques, which is watercolor and uh, alcohol markers. And it came out beautiful, just as just as pretty as the last one. Um, it was messier on like the platen, uh, like the magnetic background, but I just cleaned it up with some stamp cleaner. Now, I didn't use this one, but I wanted to make sure that I was going to be able to use... Um, 
an ink that I could just use for alcohol markers. So I am using the um, Crisp Ink, the Permanent Black from Altenew, which is safe for their alcohol markers. And here I am doing the, the Tap and Pivot. Um, and it's just the same, I like the layout that I just did. And it was really just to test it to make sure that it would work. And it did. It worked beautifully. So I'm thinking really... You can use almost any inks with this as long as they have a firm pad. Um, that That's kind of going to be, I think, the, the trick to it. So now, when I first saw the Better Press, it was at Creativation uh, back in March. And I saw Kim Kesty demo it, and it was really beautiful. And at that time, they told us, like, you can't Copic color with this, or you can't alcohol ink marker color with this. And um, I was like, oh, man, that's not going to be for me. Like, nah, that's that's not where I live at. Um, but in watching other people's videos and um, seeing, I'll actually link, this is a video hop, so there's plenty of other videos to hop along to. <laughs> um, but I will also link my friend Dawn's video where she did like this deep dive into all of this experimentation and really showed me that that's not true. You can color with these. She did colored pencils, um, you know, the markers, watercolor, all of that. So, but I just kept it to the watercolors. And one of my favorite watercoloring mediums from Altenew is their watercolor brush markers because they're so pigmented. And so that's what I chose to use today. So here is the thing, okay? And it's the paper. I'm gonna tell you that right now because I know I've used these markers so, so many times on my usual watercolor paper. Um, but basically, for these particular markers, once the color goes down, the paper, because it's 100% cotton, and truthfully, it has to be, because it has to be soft enough to give that letterpress impression. But because of that, it grabs the color right away, um, and it's hard to move with the, this particular medium. And the reason that I think that is because I think, and this is just me, you know, um, when I was spitballing ideas with some other people who are more um, well-versed in watercolor, is that the um, these watercolor pens are p not, like, pigment-based. They're ink-based. Um, and so that may be why they're not moving as well on the cotton paper. Um, but as you can see here, I found a way to make it work so that I could still have my really bright colors because, you know, that's what makes my heart happy. <laughs> um, and so basically what I did was I chose to just use my glass mat as a palette. And anytime I wanted it to be darker, I would take the um, watercolor marker directly to the paper. Um, but for getting any sort of blend, I just used, this is a number two watercolor brush from Altenew. I think it's part of their detail uh, set. Um, and so I just picked up the pigment and then I was able to move it around much easier. It's the direct to paper that was not not having it for me, not on this particular paper. And the color I'm using here, by the way, is purple wine. Um, so you probably noticed in the <laughs> in the um, photos at the beginning of the video, one of these watercolors is really um, like kind of a much tighter design. That's this one. And one of them is a lot of background. That's because it totally went awry. Like, I mean, it just went poof it just blew up. <laughs> but that's okay, because sometimes it happens. And I think the card still came out really beautiful, even though it wasn't what I originally had intended. Um, but it just, you'll see when we get there. Um, so just going through this, like I said, I'm using the glass mat as a palette, and then picking up the color I need to blend those out. Um, I am also making sure that, like, because I'm not using a ton of water here, just to be clear. Because um, really, honestly, the paper is absorbing it almost as soon as I'm putting it down. <laughs> Uh, it is an, I'm used to watercolor papers where they kind of sit on the surface, um, and this cotton paper is not. Now, um, I will say that I did, um, color them just as like a little test on, um, the, the piece that I showed you 
uh, where we use the uh, permanent black ink, I did color them with some alcohol markers and the alcohol markers worked beautifully, which is really my main concern. Um, so here I just wanted just a little bit of like a little halo effect um, for a watercolor background. So I just added some clean water and then dropped in some of the uh, purple and then I'm going in with this is the lime for um, this particular um, leaf set. We're going to change that because of my boo-boo later on. But, you know, we just roll with it here, guys. Um, speaking of rolling with it, as you're rolling through this video hop, Altenew is generously giving away... Um, $300 in prizes as they as they usually do, which is very, very generous of their company. Um, so it's $100 gift certificate. And then um, I think it is four, four, I can't math guys. Yeah, four $50 gift certificates. Um, so make sure you're leaving, um, you know, you're subscribing, you're leaving comments to all of the people on the hop. Um, and then they'll announce that uh, winners on their blog. So that's, uh, that's what's happening there. This is sped up. I don't want you to think I watercolor this fast because honestly, I don't. Um, watercolor is, it doesn't take me as long as colored pencils, but it is not as fast as uh, alcohol markers for this girl. So here, this is just the um, last little bit. And again, I wanted to add that little bit of a you know, halo kind of watercolor look behind um, the leaves. And so I put down clean water and then dropped in a little bit of pigment. And then I like a little bit of spatters. Not everybody does. Skip it if you don't like it. It's fine. Um, so that's that. And then this one is done. So now going into the next one, you this is with the obsidian ink. You will almost immediately see the issue that I have. Also, this is a hot mess, but like, just trust me, it'll be fine. Um, so here I'm just putting down a bunch of ink, knowing that I was going to do a wash of color. And then I picked up the Lagoon marker and I was trying to get the lid off and I accidentally like unscrewed it from the barrel. And then all of that ink, <laughs> all of that ink just dropped onto my card. And I was like, well, I guess it's a teal card now. So I very quickly grabbed, this is um, from their other watercolor set. It's a large, like one inch brush. Um, and started putting some water on it so that way it would move the pigment um not all over it because I wasn't trying to make the whole background this you know green color this lagoon color um but just enough that it was going to be not so dark where it had pooled um and then I'm going to start adding more color than I had originally thought um, this background was completely saturated with water by the time that I was done. So in the first one, I used very minimal water. In this one, I used a ton of water, so much water, because I had to get the pigment moving since I just dropped it right on there. Um, the other color that I used was the, um, I think it's rubellite. Um, and so now here, because you, <laughs> if you watch my channel, you know, uh, I like my pictures to be matchy matchy. So I had a lot of green and no teal. So I was like, let me go back and throw some of this teal, uh, into this, you know, background and into these leaves. Um, so, you know, that my pictures kind of sort of work out together. Um, yeah, I don't, th this part is fine. The other one, I was just like, not at all what I had originally intended, but you know, happy accident and all that, because it doesn't. Just because it's not the way that I intended it to be doesn't mean it didn't end up being pretty. However, that card took... Oh, did you see that flash? Well, to come back to that. Um, that um, it took forever to dry, like 500 years. So I did have to get a heat tool and I did have to dry it. Um, so that cotton paper really is very absorbent. <laughs> um, and it did, it was... It was taking a long time to dry, so I did have to hit it with my heat tool. Um, and then I, I'm going to go in with some alcohol markers. Um, I used, I'll list them below. I know one of them was the Sunshine Valley Garden set. Um, but really, I'm just using the same types of colors that I've already painted in there. And um, I'm just going over and adding some dimension to the flowers and the leaves, just adding some darker shadows. And then... Um, blending out as I need into the watercolor. I did not completely cover up the watercolor because I, that's the part that's like really beautiful and gives it all that texture. Uh, but I did just want to go in and define those shapes. Um, so yeah, the little flash of color that or flash of black that you saw was 
I have no idea what was going on with our power, um, which is why also why my video is going up so late. Um, but our power just kept flashing on and off. And I think this was, I mean, it's probably like two years ago now. The laptop that I have is an older laptop. And so the battery went quite some time ago, um, which means it has to be plugged in for it to work. So I never purchased another battery because my computer is always plugged in. So I didn't have to worry about it. And it's on a surge protector. But the surge protector only helps me from the surge. It does not help me from the shutting off every single time the power goes on and off. Um, and so it was doing it like multiple times and it kept like just turning off my entire laptop. So needless to say, that was not uh, helpful for video editing or, you know, accomplishing anything. So that is why, that is why I am so late. Um, just a series of unfortunate events. There's a whole other thing that was going on yesterday um, on America's birthday that is another story time that I will share in another video because it is a bit longer, that story time. Um, but yeah, so it was just like a couple of things. Um, sometimes it's just, a, you know, it just happens that week. Um, you know, when the, when the week starts to go, it just starts to go. So now both of these cards are uh, pretty much finished. The only other thing I did was I went in and I added some rhinestones um, just because I like a bit of bling. And also I think that it helps with the flow of the card um, to like fill in those gaps, especially for the one where there's a design in the left and then in the bottom right. Um, the rhinestones help guide the eye. And then for the smaller one, um, again, it helps just kind of tie everything in together. And then, um, yeah, that's it. So I love that Altenew is getting in front of the Better Press and getting some things on the market because um, I think that it's really going to be great. I will link the videos below. So happy hopping. Thank you so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.